Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to do a garden tour to see how the garden is looking now by the end of April. If you're new here, my name is Mari and I'm gardening in Queens, New York City. And I'm growing vegetables and flowers in my rental apartment backyard and a little pot garden that I have just around the corner. I'm actually going to start on the raised bed right here on this side of the garden. We have tons of things growing here already and those are all flowers i have a few other things here too this is a raspberry plant and this is a pear tree that i pruned very heavily this year it was a lot bigger last year it already flowered and it's already producing tons of little pears even though we tried to cut down a lot i think that we're still gonna have a really good harvest from it but the most exciting thing actually in this bed for me is the ranunculus so if you've been here for a while you watch me planting these super super early i had some hoops on them they even got snowed on but seem to have worked very well because these are looking extremely healthy even with the heat wave that we had not so long ago but they're looking really good growing vigorously now that it's getting warm and check this out we have our first bud actually this plant has more than one bud you see there and I spotted another one in here and we have our stock flowering so this stock obviously doesn't look super healthy but for me it's a win because it's the first time that I'm growing them so I'm already happy with the way they look theirs are not looking as good as the ones in the plot which I'm going to show you a little bit later today but the ones in the plot are mostly looking like this one as you can see it looks a lot the stem looks a lot thicker bigger leaves and hopefully you have a bit more blooms too those over there look a little skinny and thin but it's okay I'm happy with those flowers anyways but I'm really curious to see how this other one here is gonna look that one is starting to go through flower too and the peony or peony I never know how to say I'm sorry about that I can never remember it's almost starting to crack look at this gorgeous bud full of ants like always, and it's showing color already but this guy grew extremely fast and I put a cage over it because it was kind of flopping and it's looking great I'm thinking that maybe in a week or two you gotta have some peonies in here or even sooner I don't know sweet peas in the back looking really good those are cut flower sweet peas starting to finally put some growth over here too I got some snapdragons they're also starting to bud very exciting Dahlia in the back. My original plan was just to put a lot of flowers here for the pollinators but since they're starting to look so nice and there's a lot more blooming I might cut those for arrangements in the home. And here I have a straw flower that I planted also super early and it's very vigorous and looking a lot lot better than the straw flowers that I planted last year later in the season. So this really enjoyed growing the cold. Kind of impressive how nice it looks I have some fever fever in here too Basho button and Laxper and calendula which is already blooming those are all cool season flowers I mean most of them here are cool season flowers other than the dahlias and here I have the Lysiantus peony little things they got a little burnt when we were gone we were gone during the week that was really hot in here so they got a little sunburnt. I thought first I had just seen this one, but this also got sunburnt. And they're growing very slow compared to everybody else that's filling up and making the bed look quite full. But it's all right, this is my first year growing Lysiantus too. And I'm curious to see how it's going to look like. I think it's gonna be okay, because I see that it's starting to get tall. It's sending this stem in here, which is good. So we'll see, hopefully we'll have some to cut in the summer. There's another dahlia in there. That one's actually from seed. Those three are all from seed. This one is growing very nice, some floret. And not a straw flower. This side of the garden is actually pretty shady because of this big fence here. And I decided to just put in here my leftover seeds and they seem to be doing pretty good so far. Those, I think most of these can tolerate some shade, so that's why most of these varieties, they're doing okay. There's some Cosmos in the back, a straw flower again, Snapdragons, Calendula, some White Dill, Status, Orlea, Feverfew. That year, I'm not sure if it's doing very well or not. And some leftover poppies that are just growing here. This one was a clump, so that's a lot in there. I don't know how that's going to grow, but I can't, I'm kind of curious to see. And there's a couple that are separated and it's looking just okay. But raised bed is looking really nice compared to last year. There's some lilies that 
are going back. This was planted by the previous tenant that lived in here. She also liked to garden and she planted a few flowers. She planted this peony too, it was hers. And she also planted this lily. So they're just coming back. It's looking very nice. I really liking the way this, this raised bed is filling up. I can't wait to show you guys in June and see this thing all taking over almost. The plants grow so tall that almost like cover all the fence. Oh, speaking of growing super tall, I forgot to show you guys something really cool. I've got a lot of sunflowers, seeds that self-seeded from last year. I had a big chocolate sunflower growing here, got super tall and obviously maybe a head fell, maybe some birds or squirrel ate the head and some seeds dropped. That's a lot of them growing together there. I am not going to tend them, I'm just kind of let them grow as is. There's another one there. This one I think I moved it, I tried to transplant, even though sunflowers are like we transplanted, and another one there. So we're gonna have some sunflowers in the background too. All right, let's move on to the container part of the garden now. I was early in the spring, I don't really like to show this because you can see it below my porch and I was, it looks messy, but after it will grow over and cover all that mess, but it's important to see how things are in the beginning too. So I have some peas in here that I sowed, I can't remember, not that long ago, but they're growing really well. Those are edible peas, I believe those are the yellow snow pea ones, and this it's some carrot that I actually sold in January and they came up. I was not even expecting to have carrots this year, but they decided to come up, so I'm gonna let them grow. I had a lot more in here, but I have a squirrel problem and it kept coming and digging and took a lot of them out. So I decided to plant a couple things in the spaces that I had in there. This is choisome that I had started a few weeks ago. It's a variety of Asian green and I'm going to harvest these and eat pretty soon. They grow actually very fast. I put a couple more in here too. I had it in the tray and just kept plugging it in the spaces that I had empty in the garden because it's a very quick crop. I did the same thing with radishes. I'll show you guys that in a minute. So this is a white deal growing really well here. It's probably really liking this location. And I have a poppy, Icelandic poppy that has a bud. Hopefully you can see it bloom. And I don't know, by dinner next week or so. I'm not sure. I never planted this. I don't know how long they take to bloom, but I'm very excited to see them. I have some cilantro in here that I might harvest a little bit for dinner tonight. And larkspur, those are all also very early planted. This calendula, it's blooming beautifully. This is, I think, bronze beauty from Florette. Everything in the garden is the same variety, the ones you guys saw before too. I have an eucalyptus that I started super early, but just transplanted maybe a week or two ago because eucalyptus really like it hot. But it was not looking very well in the cells. I'll show you guys the other ones, how they look. But as soon as I put it out and gave more space, it just took off. So I have to transplant the other ones too. This is a little filler flower. I have some more white deal in here. These are sweet peas for cut flowers. I think this is the, the dark red variety. I have a cosmos in here. I pinched this too. You can see it's pinched and it's sending very nice growth on the sides. This one was recently planted to the same time that I planted the dahlias. I have a ginger in here. <laughs> they started sprouting inside my house and I put it in a little bit of in a little pot and sent out the shoots and I transplanted in here, but it's yellowing. I think it's not liking the cold. Maybe it's too early for me to plant that out, but I don't have space, so I'll leave it in here and see how it goes. Rutbeckia, this is a Sahara variety. I'm leaving that space open there to plant some bush beans. I want to do some dragon tongue beans on that pot. Those are some edible peas. I believe those are snow peas. And, no, those are sugar snap peas in this pot. This is Clarkia. It's a cut flower too. Basho button, jasmine, and the green stalks back here. I have some flowers growing there, but also some broccoli. All those little guys are supposed to be a mini broccoli. It's supposed to mature very fast, so I'm hoping that by next month I can harvest that. Strawberries are looking good up here. Lots of new flowers and small fruit. Some people pinch the flowers in the beginning. This is the second year of the strawberry. I'm not gonna <laughs> pinch it, I just wanna eat them. I don't care if they're small, they're still sweet and delicious. So I'm just going to leave them there. This green stalk here, I just cut something that was in here. I don't remember what it was, but it was full of aphids. So I cut it off, so this pocket's, pocket's empty, but I plan to put a tomato in here, so that's good, I have some space. And beautiful Lennox lettuce, looking amazing. I have the calendula here too. I cut the main one to put it inside in my house, and there's a couple more coming. Those scratches in here in these pockets, because this section here was underneath and I switched them, because I wanted those perennials in there to grow in the bottom. This was my fault, because I kept rotating them, and I have that little concrete thing behind there, and kept scratching. 
but it's okay because once things grow in here it kind of hides it I'm gonna put a variety of tomato here that's called Sherry Falls so we'll fall over and we're not gonna have to see that anymore I have some parsley over here too that's also going to see this is from last year it died back and came back this spring but I'm gonna also let it go to flower I also have a carrot here that's doing the same thing and I'm gonna let it go to seed and beautiful pansies look at the color of this one this is supposed to be the brush strokes varieties but I'm not sure if it came it wrong and if I got like some more antique shade like but I'm loving this I'm very very excited they look amazing they're tiny too but they'll grow big the most exciting thing in this green stock is check this out I have radishes they're huge I'm not harvesting them now I'm gonna actually take this off because I can't move it because I want to actually have a salad a little bit later in the week I'll let, let them grow for a couple more days and then I'll harvest everything with the salads in the green stock but this one you see how it's still skinny in here and if I leave it in there you fatten up you're gonna get fat all the way to the top same with that one so I'm gonna leave them in there for a little bit longer but it's looking pretty good nice size this grows so fast I think they take like 28 days for maturity less than a month so after the green stalks I have this Rebecca in here too with some more radishes I, like, like I mentioned with the choice them I just sold some radish seeds everywhere in the spaces that I have empty before these guys get big and this is a perfect temperature for radishes so they're growing really good I have some peas in here I don't know the variety those are old seeds that I just put it in there this is more ranunculus this guy's got a little bit more damaged with the heat wave that we had so they still have some flowers that are burned they didn't leave sorry they're burned and didn't have a chance to come and pick them all out but i moved them here they were there with these other planters i moved them here to be a bit more in the shade in the afternoon and get some morning sun now in this table i have all of the tomatoes look at that that i'm growing this year and they are huge i put them out here to start acclimating them and also to water them because they're now starting to get dry pretty fast so i'm gonna water them with a hose today and they're looking so 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 nice the majority of this is for the seedling sale that i'm hosting probably in mother's day weekend and some people want to do pre-orders and come pick it up because the weather is a bit warmer it's been a bit warmer some people want to plant them out already so i might not have this many when the seedling sale comes so I'm going to be planting a few determinate varieties in the green stocks so maybe it's one tray for me and the other ones for sale I can't I got a couple neighbors that talked to me yesterday that they want to pick up a bunch of them but there's also you guys from YouTube and Instagram that want to get some so hopefully I have enough for everybody but more people are showing interest than I anticipated so let's see how it goes and over here I have some kale I also had a person that asked me for dino kale and then I planted a bunch more because she says some friends might want to get some too. So they're in here. Hopefully they're a bit bigger in three weeks. They'll definitely be. And then I have some other kale varieties. This is a kale mix. Only got one red Russian, which is one of my favorite varieties because it's just so resilient with the cold and the warm weather. This year are flowers for upstate for a wedding location. This is the other eucalyptus you see. They do not look very happy. The, the one that I planted in that part was looking like this too, had some weird stuff on the leaves but as soon as I put it out it started looking nice again so I really need to transplant these guys and find a home for them so they can start looking good but I might sell a couple too because I had a couple people that said they really wanted to grow eucalyptus, they love the smell so I'll see. Pansies, same variety that I showed, these guys are about to open looking very nice, these almost got all burnt when I were gone too but they came back a lot of my seedlings died but these guys came back it's kind of impressive this one too i thought it was dead i'm very surprised by its resilience and this one here also has a bud looking good the sedum here is for upstate too and i have some sunset status that's for me but here are all zinnias these are the zinnias that became very very leggy when i actually left and i tried to repot them they're not all doing well but some of them are definitely doing good like this one over here I um, can plant that one over here is looking good so I'm still gonna try to plant them even if I have to plant them in the front yard but these are most of the seedlings that are outside here and I actually don't have a lot more inside other than some basil and some more flowers so I'm not gonna take you guys there today because there's only like few trays left in my grow rack now let's take a look on the beautiful lettuce green stock 
look at this it's gorgeous this thing it's growing so so fast i did harvest a few things doesn't even look like and it's just putting crazy growth i think it was the organic fertilizer that i used when i was amending this planter i have a video doing it i can link to you guys that's the only thing i did different from last year and you can see that the result is amazing i was already very very excited by how it looked like last year but i'm gonna put a picture here how it looked by the same time the year before so this is a lot bigger already i had probably i only had them to get this big last year by around mid to late may so quite impressive i am so happy with this i have some kale it's in here in the bottom they're doing good growing well they're not growing very much i don't know if you guys remember last time i showed but they're just started doing pretty good this week i have some chives are starting to flower i harvested this whole thing a couple weeks ago and just grew all of this back it's kind of crazy i need to harvest it again i got some red lettuce arugula tatsu i got some yellow on this i gotta see what it is maybe just have to harvest it getting too overcrowded in there huge mustard i have to harvest this too this guy i seriously i can't i'm not being able to keep up it's just growing a lot faster than we can eat but it's okay i'm gonna have more time this next week and i'll try to at least harvest maybe the bok choy and if i don't if we don't use it for dinner I just blanch it and freeze it they freeze very well after the blanch so it's all right and i'll try to eat the fresh lettuces but these ones we can't really freeze but they also last for a very long time in the fridge but i like to eat them fresh look at this love that purple lady bok choy it's one of my favorites for sure I'm actually having a bit of a pest problem in the garden already, which are aphids. I've had tons of aphids so far. I do not do anything. I don't spray anything in the garden, not even Nemo or BT or anything like that. The only thing that I've been doing is spraying these guys with water, plain water in the holes and spraying them really hard so I can try to knock these aphids off. I did that this morning, so there's not as many in here. I try to do it every morning because some of those white cabbage aphids were all over all of my brassicas here not the lettuces the lettuces seem to be fine even though the one down there got some of the red one but this bok choy in here were suffering a little bit i don't know if it's because they grew too fast and i've heard that sometimes when you have a lot of green growth it attracts more aphids you know the plant grows too fast there's too much nitrogen but seem to be okay to be only controlling it with some water really excited for is when the, for the ladybugs to move in last year i think by mid-may we had tons of ladybug larvae and that was really good because they really like to eat aphids and they just came naturally we did not release any ladybugs in here so i'm hoping that they come back this year again so they can help me managing this aphid problem now if you watch the one year review video that i put it on green stock i talked about this helping me to relieve some past issue but i was mostly referring to like slugs and roly polies things they crawl into the ground if you plant them in raised beds it is a little bit hard to prevent aphids even with having them growing up like this and sometimes also you can have problem with cabbage moths which i have seen a couple flying around already which gets me a little worried but i have an insect cover and i could put it in there but i want to make sure that i solve my aphid problem first before i trap all of them in there with the insect cover you know what i mean like the insect cover will help the butterflies the cabbage moths not landing there and laying eggs but if i put it while i have an aphid infestation it might just be a breeding ground for more aphids so I'm in the middle of the way situation here. Hopefully the ladybugs move in soon, take care of these aphids for me, and there'll be enough time for me to still cover this to protect from the cabbage moths. Other than this beautiful green stalk growing up here, I have these pots with herbs. This time it's going on in its third year. It's coming back nice and strong. It provided tons of time for us. I used all for cooking. It gave me enough for the whole year to use it fresh and still I dried the excess to be able to use all winter too, which was really good. And then I have some oregano that's also coming back. I'm excited about that. And I actually was cleaning some lettuce in here and accidentally pulled a couple seedlings out and tried to just stick them in there. I'm not sure if they're gonna make it or not. I just felt bad throwing them away. So let's see what's gonna happen. And then here on the ground, I have some peas. Those are sugar snaps. No, those are sweet peas, sorry. I better don't get confused because those are actually toxic. But those are the sweet peas that I planted early, early in the season too and branched out beautifully by itself without me having to pinch. 
And I have some mint in here that is volunteering here. I did not have mint here last year. I don't know if I accidentally throw like a stem in there and it's just growing because you know how mint can grow super aggressively, but I'm not taking it out. I love mint tea and I love the smell of it. So I'll leave it in here. I'll let it grow for this year in here. But I got some shiso coming back from last year too. It's popping out everywhere. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys. And there is beds actually, but I have tons of tomato seedlings actually popping up in there. I've been pulling them because last year this was all tomatoes. And here I have some more sweet peas. These ones are starting to grow nicely, kind of getting shaded by the green stalk now. And I put some plants out to acclimate and I kind of forgot. I burnt them. These are house plants that I need to take care of, so don't pay attention to this. And I have some flowers here. This is a straw flower that is budding up already i got some more sun in here so this one's growing a bit faster than the ones in the raised bed this is a calendula that's looking really nice too but this was planted later than the ones that are down there and flowering already and here i have some more tatsoi that i just moved to this spot in here to give us a little quick crop to eat very soon and this was all for the backyard we are going to go to the plot next but I'm going to wait a little bit because there's lots of sirens going on in my street. Maybe there's something going on nearby. There were actually some helicopters flying by too. So I'm going to wait. I've been turning off the camera and turning back to film this video. But I'll wait a little bit, see if that goes away. Then I'll head to the plot and show you guys how everything is looking there. Right, made it to the plot. Let's take a quick look on how everything is looking here it might not be looking as good to you guys but to me it's looking amazing because it's looking a lot better than it was last year by this time these over here are all cool season cut flowers and this side of the plot gets shaded in the afternoon so i'm hoping that these guys are going to last by mid-summer when i'm planning to cut a lot of the flowers for our wedding upstate but here in this corner i have some cosmos actually those are not cool season those are the only ones probably but i planted this a little later because cosmos can tolerate some shade too and i have extra so i planted this in the corner but these are poppies planted super early in the season i think i started these seeds in january just planted super early they did nothing for a very long time i thought they were not going to take and now they're just putting a lot of growth and growing very well this is colorado yarrow that came back from last year and is growing a lot nicer already than did last year these guys did not flower last year so i'm really hoping that they will this year this space here is a little empty i'm going to plant some warm season flowers in there and these are some clarkia too which is a cool season flower and i grew this as an experiment i already allocated lots of space for it in my backyard so i might just cut this once they flower too and plant some zinus or something in here then i have some extra ranunculus that i also did not have space for in my backyard and they're growing nicely here but no buds on this batch yet here there's some snapdragons they are really starting to put some nice growth in here some of them are even budding like the ones in my backyard i have this beautiful chive in here very tall I haven't cut from this one yet this one's just going to be for beauty and it's full of little buds too next to the snapdragons i have this gorgeous style fl straw flowers they're looking very showy and beautiful and hopefully they will flower for us soon too i also think there are buds on them i don't know if you guys can see but let's see how long it takes from that to flower before i go over there on this side over here i have this ginormous fever few here it's the one that overwintered from last year and it's starting to put some buds in it too so it survived the winter and just put tons of new growth once the weather starting warming up these poppies are from the same batch as those over there oh i forgot to talk about the variety of those those are the peony poppies from baker creek and they are black the super deep purple one and cream white and then i have some bachelor's button in here some fennel this bronze fennel came back from last year too this was from last year it got beautiful last year and also through a lot of seeds because i can see little baby fennel seedlings everywhere might be hard to see in the camera because they're brown but they're literally growing everywhere and i'm just leaving them this fever fuel here is a tetra white fever fuel this is planted this year in the spring but you can see the difference that's crazy overwintered versus planted in early spring incredible huh? so much more vigorous on this side over here i might have to do some more overwintering tests this year too and here i have some white dill and some calendula i threw some seeds in here by last fall too but i don't see anything coming up oh there's some chamomile actually i just spotted so there's some chamomile that was from last year too i think some seeds fell so that's good 
I don't know what seedling. Yeah, we'll see what time what comes up from this patch. But this is more like a wild little entrance to the garden. I created this new bed here and decided to put some landscape fabric. This is where last year we used to have a peach tree that got sick and we removed it. So I actually just dug a trench in there and put the soil over. So the soil is a little bit less compacted up there. I had first intended to put dahlias in here, but I might put sunflower seeds, sunflower. I don't know yet, I'll let you guys know when time goes by, but next on this side is this gorgeous stock. You see the difference the ones in my backyard and the ones here? Those are a lot thicker, the leaves are much bigger, they're looking a lot healthier, I guess, than the ones that I had in my backyard there. I don't know why, maybe it's hotter there, gets a lot more sun, maybe they prefer the cooler part shade situation this gets shaded in the afternoon they still get full sun but they get afternoon shade in here and then behind here have some more sweet peas there's some sweet peas back there too hopefully these guys grow because they're taking forever and i love to see some of their flowers in the garden so before i go there back to this side poppies same batch but i get a lot more sun in here you can see how much bigger they are in here and there and there's some straw flower also this was planted first. This is the apricot beauty straw flower. And that one over there is vintage white straw flower. That was planted a few weeks after this one. So that one is doing a lot better. I put some dahlias in the ground because I was running out of space. So I decided to just plant the dahlias here. These are all pre-sprouted. So they already had roots and everything when I put it in here. So I hope that there's less chance of the tuber rotting because the ground is probably not 60 degrees yet. But they all seem to be doing fine since I planted them. And then here I have more calendula. They all have very short stems, but this one is super nice and full. Look at that. Gorgeous. I love the little orange tips that this one is getting. But I'm probably going to cut those to stimulate them to grow a little bit taller. So these beds here are not planted. They have been reserved in here for the warm weather crops. I'm probably going to do zinnias in here and tomatoes there and tomatoes there and this is all flowers too so you can see that this year the garden is a lot more dedicated to flowers than it was last year we're still gonna have some veggies in here most of the veggies are probably gonna be grown in my green stock this year in the pots back there closer to me i have planted some lettuces here for my neighbor and these are the same beautiful big ones that are in the green stock but they've been getting eaten this always happens you guys see when i put them out here in the ground i think there's slugs and in the spring when it's nice and wet and rainy this leg just attack them and it's hard, very hard for them to grow so they've been eaten from the outside all of them look how tiny this one is the green ones didn't even get a chance those are only planted maybe one week or two after the ones that i have in my green stock so the difference is considerable so if you want to see why i don't like to plant them in the ground so the kale is doing good this variety is doing really good this is our passive compost pile they're just throw stuff in here i like to do browns and greens so i do dried stuff and then green stuff and hopefully it will get good by the end of the year we don't fully manage but it, it works i covered this winter so it did nothing really happen there because it got really dry so now hopefully with the moisture things are going to start kicking back off in there and here this is a new bed i didn't plant anything there last year but i Plant, I got the compost that was in there and put it in here to make it a little more elevated and planted a few flowers in there. I got some dahlias from seed in there, some cosmos, and there's a potato, <laughs> random, that I probably put in the compost there and never really decomposed and it's now growing back there. Those are poppies, celosia, white teal, some snapdragons. And there's some rudbeckia in there, calendula, stock, and that's it. We've been through the whole plot. Give us a couple months. And this is going to be all filled up with greens and beauty. So that was it for today. I am losing sunlight, so I'm going to end this tour here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.